Welcome to Not Ashamed. I'm your host, Ashley Nordman. Today, I'm here with special guest, Monica Nikki Garcia. Monica, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Thank you. Me too. I'm, I've been looking forward to talking to you for so long because I mean, obviously everyone knows you from Housewives of Salt Lake City, but yes. yeah. I feel like if people follow you online or even like keep up with you at all, like you can tell you are such a genuine radiant soul. And from Thank talking you. to you before we came on here, I can just tell like you have just a big, beautiful personality. So I'm really excited to just get to know you a little more today. <laughs> Yay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I'm, I'm excited. I always love these opportunities to be able to just give kind of like a different perspective. That's not like in a crazy intense environment that's <laughs> where we can just have like a normal chill conversation. So yeah, thank you. Yeah. That's a really good way to put it. Cause I didn't really think of that. I'm sure obviously being in front of a camera is really stressful. And then you kind of feel like you have to perform. Cause I get that. I mean, even recording yeah. a podcast, I'm like, okay, got to put on my, you know, my best mm -hmm. foot forward, put on my show face, like be in my best mood. And sometimes it's hard to feel like you can just like breathe and be yourself and not feel like you have to meet some agenda or whatever, yeah. you know, is happening that day when you're filming. So is it mm -hmm. an interesting transition? Like because obviously you were on The Housewives and yes. how many seasons were you on that? I was a one and done. A one and done. Okay. I know <laughs> yeah. they didn't ask you back, but I couldn't remember if you were only on one or multiple. So yeah, no, I was season. only on, I was on a, you know, one season fling type thing. It was, yeah. It was a fling. It was a situationship. So yeah. Not a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you feel like not being asked back on like that? Was that hard or were you okay? It was, it was, and I don't even think it was shocking. I mean, everyone kind of was like, there's no way she's not coming back. We want to know more. We want to see the fallout. We want to know how this ends. Um, we want to see like the redemption arc, you know what they call it, or yeah. we want to see them work through this. That's, that's what a relationship really is. I mean, everyone's like shocked and it's like, are you serious? If, if, especially with women, we all know our friendships are ups and downs. You know, you have disagreements, you have fights that those are real friendships. You disagree with what your friends might do at times or whatever, but you like push through it. And that's what gives any kind of relationship value or depth. And so I think for me, I was more shocked, like, we're really not going to give the fans that like, we're really just gonna cut it off here and that's it. And there's nothing to follow that. I think if anything, I was more shocked, um, at that move than anything yeah, like else. I was, it was like, it was like cut off short. Like there was 100%, no, like, yeah. 100 I was not shocked at the women, um, barricading my ass from coming back. I was more shocked at the network, giving into that than anything. Yeah. And I love Bravo. Bravo, Shed, they were incredible with me, but I, I was shocked that they caved. I was shocked that they gave the women what they wanted and not the fans what they wanted. Yeah. So the fans really wanted you to return, yeah. but there were clearly some people that were pressuring them to not let you come back. And that was pretty all painful. All, all yeah. the cast. Yeah. Aside from Mary, all the casts were like, we refused to film with her. So. so this kind of feels like a little, and you know, I'm, I don't know the situation, but I'm, I'm like wondering, is it like mean girl energy kind of stuff where they're just like, we're better than her. We don't want her coming back or. I think it's definitely, look, this is how I look at it. It's a job. This yep. is a job. At the end of the day, we get a check for doing what we do. We get paid to show up. We get paid to be in certain places. Um, and these are coworkers, right? If you're looking at it rationally, everybody in America and around the world works with people that they don't like or that they don't want to work with, or they can't stand their boss, or there's a Karen in the office or whatever. <laughs> you still have to go to work and do your damn job. So I think, I think, you know, in, in this kind of world, I don't, I don't understand it. For me, I don't understand. And this happened. I'm not saying that my cast is the only one to do this. I'm sure this happens across the board mm -hmm. um, with other shows, even not even just, you know, on Bravo or reality TV. But I think icing out someone um, just because you want to flex your power is not okay. 
Yeah. I think that it's, you know, show up and do your job at the end of the day. It's housewives. It's housewives. Like, are you serious? Like, <laughs> what the hell? So it's just, I don't know. It's very interesting. Yeah, you know? that is interesting. So how was your time on the actual show? Like, what would you, what would you say looking back? Um, it's okay. How would I, overall, the experience was an absolute blessing for my life, right? I owe Bravo a lot for giving me the opportunity to have a platform to better my life, to provide for my girls. Um, dealing with the women, I, I really wouldn't wish that on anyone. Um, I don't think people know a lot of really what was going on behind the scenes and the stuff that was being done to me by them in real life. Mm. Um, and I'm not even going to blame all of the cast. People know who I'm talking about. People who have seen the show or reunion or, you know, watched on social media, they know who I'm referring to. Yeah. Um, there's some really, really fucked up shit quite frankly. And it made it a complete and utter hell for me. And, you know, it's ironic because they want to sit there and act like an alleged troll account um, made their lives nightmares, which it didn't. It had nothing to do with them. This was about Jed Shaw. Um, but what they did to me in real life was, was sick. So... Yeah. So you were dealing with a lot of backlash behind the scenes that people didn't even get to witness basically yeah. from the TVs. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Or the cameras, I guess. So, yeah. So recording or not recording, you were kind of dealing with this 24 seven, no matter what. A hundred percent. Yeah. And so I guess that's something like, especially someone like me, who's never obviously been on like a reality TV show. Like I never really thought of that. Like obviously you're filming, but then outside of filming, like that's affecting your real life if you're around these women who live in semi-close proximity to you too so yeah. you're being kind of like dealing with this drama on and off camera t constantly that's probably yes. very exhausting yeah it's pretty you know at the end of reunion they have all these certain people on set right like it's a mm -hmm. huge set there's tons and tons of people and they had a psychiatrist on set and at the end of reunion, I ran off, you know, went back to my room, whatever. They all went to dinner together. They had dinner reservations and they all went out and had dinner together. And I went into my room and I just like lost it. I just broke down. Um, and the psychiatrist and everyone came up there and he said, I've been doing this, um, not just with Bravo, but in reality TV. He's like, I've been doing reunions and this for over 20 plus years, I've never seen anything like that. Hmm. Um, I literally just was beat up on for 13 hours straight. And he said, you know, what you just went through mentally and emotionally is the equivalent to a severe accident physically. Like it was brutal. It was brutal. And, you know, I think that people, it's easy to sit there and be like, oh, well, you this and you deserve that or whatever. But it's like, at the end of the day, we're all freaking human. And those women are no better than me. They are no better than me. What they have done is worse than anything that troll account ever did. And I think that people miss, you know, all of that in the mix. Sorry, my daughter is like, absolutely not. <laughs> no, sorry. No, no. No. Is it your six-year-old? <laughs> it's my eight-year-old. Can oh, yeah. we go to my home today? We'll see. Okay. Here, you can't have that on. She's like literally starts turning up her iPad. I'm like, are you kidding me? It's not an iPad. Her cell phone, whatever. Oh my God. Girl, I already know you know exactly what I'm dealing with right now. <laughs> How much I do. longer is it? I do. It's going to be longer if you interrupt me and turn up your phone. <laughs> now the song is in my head. Okay. I'm so sorry. Okay, go ahead. Okay, you guys have to be so quiet. So quiet. <laughs> Mom life girl, it's struggling and everything. Come here, look. Come here. I have to show you her hair because just you said what you said about your daughter. Yeah. <laughs> See oh my her gosh. Hair. My yeah. daughter's here just like that. Okay, well, speaking of being a mom. Yes. Um, I 
I want to talk a little bit about your background with your mom because I know you have a really interesting relationship with her. Yes. Do you mind talking about that and and kind no, of? No, their- for sure, oh. of course. So, I'm so sorry. Okay, you guys, you're gonna have to go out of the room because <laughs> you're not being quiet. Yes, I am. That's Kendall. No, it's both of you. It's both of you. You know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. Okay. No, you're totally fine. I swear. It just makes me laugh because I'm like, this is what I get to look forward to when my daughter's a little older. Oh, it's so crazy. (laughs) I'm like, oh yeah, one day she's going to have full sentences she can say to me because right now she still says like words, you know? (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, "Ah." (laughs) So let's discuss your relationship with your mother because I know you have a pretty interesting story there. Yeah. So I... I haven't spoken to my mom since reunion aired since like part three aired. Oh, so right. it's been months yeah. and I don't plan on ever salvaging that relationship ever. I'm done. I, I really am. I'm a hundred percent done. I think when you're in it and you're going through it and you grow up in this kind of way, you're almost numb to it or it feels like normal. You're used to the pattern and mm-hmm. You just kind of accept it. I think doing the show, uh, I mean, it definitely obliterated my relationship with my mother, but I don't think that's the show's fault. It was how my mother was when the show came out. It was, it was, she was brutal online. She was absolutely embarrassing and relentless on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Um, And she actually came over to my house and was like, we need to fix this. And I said, okay, well, if there's any chance of repair, you know, I have some requests. And she was like, well, I do too. And I'm like, okay, well, let me give you mine. And I said, you have to stay offline. There's no way this is going to work with you taking everything on Twitter, bashing me on Twitter. Like it's, it's embarrassing. It's, you know, and she said, I can't do that. Wow. And I said, then there's nowhere to go. And so I just, I'm almost kind of grateful for the show in a way to be honest, because I completely allowed and accepted her toxicity for so many years and justified it and just kind of accepted it as this is what it is. Mm -hmm. But watching the show kind of gives you like an, an out of body experience a little bit. Um, where you're sitting there watching yourself with your mother on screen and seeing how mortifying that is and just what she put me through during the whole airing process. I just, yeah, there is no relationship there. There will never be a relationship there. Everyone always says, don't say that. You'll change your mind or you never know. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a hundred percent positive. Like that was in literally in front of the entire world just continued to massacre me online. I I just, I can't, I get enough of that from everybody else. I don't need it from my own mother. And there's just no, no moving forward there. Especially if she's like, I'm not doing that. So (laughs) there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go from there. Yeah. Where you needed her to, yeah, you know? And I feel like I just, first of all, I have goosebumps and I'm so, so sorry that this is what it came to. But at the same time, like I do feel like there's people in my life I've had to cut off, not family members, but people that have been essentially like family to me. And yeah, I get it. Sometimes if it's just not serving you, like you just have to create that boundary. Yeah. I just keep getting this word in my head, betrayal from her. Yeah. Just like you are saying this, I just keep hearing like betrayal. Cause I mean, this is your mother. Yeah. And she left you when you were a child. That's already and whatever the reasoning was like the the feeling i'm sure as a child is like it feels like betrayal then and right. then it's like you just this recurring thing and i feel like maybe the housewives was the experience you needed to have to yeah. finally see that like i'm not going to deal with this anymore i'm not gonna let you come in and out of my life and and like run the narrative anymore like this is my exactly. life and i'm in control of like who i allow to be in there or not exactly no a hundred percent and that's what i mean i'm kind of like grateful for it. I don't blame the show for, I think that the show gets a lot of, it does get a lot of like hate for like, it ruins marriages, it ruins relationships, it ruins family. And it's like, no, at the end of the day, those people are still doing what they're doing. Do you know what I mean? And my mom still chose to do what she did on her own. 
not because of the show. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and she was doing it when we weren't even filming. So it's like, no, it's not the show's fault. You yeah, know, that's who she was, no matter what. And you have got was. to be kidding me. <laughs> Can you sit in the tunnel for an hour and thirty minutes? Okay. Okay. Great. Okay, set it. No, I am working. Mommy's starting to get upset. Yeah, because you're doing this on purpose. Oh, she knows what she's doing. Oh yeah. <laughs> Mm -mm. <laughs> we'll get creative i'm sure oh yeah anything to get attention <laughs> like you, you're really asking me to set a timer right now that's what's happening yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but anyways yeah i just i don't i don't think anyone can really blame the show for you know one's behavior or whatever i think that the show does put you in very stressful situations for sure. And it's a mental game for sure. And you're kind of just exposed to the world and that kind of makes you very vulnerable and emotional and erratic for sure. But my mom wasn't on the show like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I just, I, I don't have any, I, I just, I can't justify her behavior at all. So for me, it's just done. Yeah. And I feel like, kind of what you're alluding to, like the show almost just exposes like the areas in your life where you're already probably struggling. And these were things that were bound to happen anyway, but then when they yeah. do unfold, it's easy for people to just blame Bravo or blame exactly. the show. When exactly. it's like, well, these are real people's lives and these were things that were possibly happening already, but now the whole right. world just knows about it. So right. yeah. yeah, it's easy to point fingers. Yes. So you have no intention of reaching out to your mom anymore. And no just kind of severing that relationship. Do you feel relief from that? Or do you feel like guilt at all? Or does it feel like just so much better? Like just being like, you know what? I tried everything I could. I'm moving forward. Yeah. I feel no guilt. <laughs> I think I, I, I don't, I, I, I'm not going to as a child at the end of the day, she's my mother. Mm -hmm. And I asked her for one simple thing. I just said, don't take our relationship online anymore. She said, I can't do that. I'm not going to stay off Twitter or X or whatever. And so I, I don't need to feel guilty for that. Yeah. I, and I don't I, think I would either. No. Like, I think it's kind of like in any relationship, if you kind of give like your boundaries or conditions or feelings or whatever, and they're just kind of like, screw that. I mean, there's you, that's, that's the end of the road, you know? Yeah. And I think <laughs> as you get older, like when you set boundaries like that, if people break them, you are kind of left with no choice at some point. Yeah. It's like, I just have to cut you off then. If you're not willing to respect what I need from you, yeah, it's not healthy. And yeah. so I think that's huge because I do feel like there's a lot of guilt associated with people that might have toxic family members and like, just feel like yeah. they have to keep them around because they're family. But it's like, yeah. in reality, as hard as it is to admit, sometimes it is really hard, but you have to kind of step away and just kind of move on. And maybe, maybe God forbid something will change and yeah. one day you guys can be brought back together, but maybe not. And, and I think you'll go to bed at night knowing like you are doing what's best for you and your four daughters and what's right. best for, you know, everybody, because you can't, if you allow people to walk all over you, you're setting the standard for how, how much you really respect yourself. Exactly. And so I think that's a huge thing for your children to see that you're like, listen, mommy's not allowing anyone in her life that walks all over her or treats her like shit or runs her name in the mud online. Yeah. And you shouldn't either. Yeah. I think too, there's just like this stigma kind of like, okay, but it's your mom or, but it's your dad. And so you should put up with it because it's your parent or still respect them because it's your parent or whatever. And I just, I don't believe that. I think that parents can be very abusive. Um, I think that they can be very um, damaging mentally mm -hmm. for your well being to your children for whatever. And I don't think you should put up with it just because they're a parent. I think that, I don't know. I just, I just think that that is such a dangerous mentality to have. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I, I understand she's my mom and people are like, Nope, that's your mom. Nope, but it's your mom. And it's like, no, it, is, it could be a, a, anyone, you know? I think that I almost feel the opposite. Like, because she's my mom, she shouldn't be doing that to me. I don't I don't know. 
So I think it's, I think that stigma sh needs to kind of, to go away. I think, yeah, hundred percent respect your parents, but if they're out there doing you dirty and causing you pain and they're blatantly telling you to your face, I'm not going to change, you know, I don't think that you should keep putting up with it just because they're your mom. Yeah, I agree with that. And I feel like it's a really hard thing for women, especially at times to cut people off and to know when it's time to do that. I actually did right. like an entire episode on this and it was something that resonated with a lot of people because it really is difficult to know like when is enough enough. Yeah. And so like, do you have a lot of good support in your life or like a therapist or something that like helped you finally stand your ground and do this? Cause I feel like this is something that would be very, very hard for most women to do to cut someone off. Yeah. I honestly, I think a hundred percent, it was just the show. Like really? I have, I have therapists and you know, the show is great. They give you psychiatrists and therapists and whatever that are literally on call. You can call 24 seven the whole time. And you know, that's wonderful and whatever. And I do have amazing um, friends and family members. Like my ex-husband's actually really great. Um, my partner now is really great. <laughs> it's just, you know, they all, cause they see the people in my life actually see, um, what I deal with, with yeah. her. And so, you know, I am lucky in that aspect that they have experienced her firsthand and they're like, the world doesn't even know how deep this goes and how, you know, bad it really is in real time. And so, yeah, I am very grateful for that for sure. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's impressive. I'm, I'm impressed myself just because I feel like, especially having as many eyes on you as you do that you yeah. knew you were probably going to get a little backlash from that, but yeah, you know what you want and you know what your life, like what you deserve and what you want in your life. And if that's what you have to do to find peace and happiness, then so be it. We'll get back to the podcast in just a moment. This episode is sponsored by AN Skin, your answer for all things skincare and beauty. Our medical grade products, made in the USA, use high quality ingredients and are clinically proven to give you clear, healthy, youthful skin. Everything is cruelty free. Visit anskinbeauty.com to shop now and regain your confidence. Now, back to the episode. This could be good. We can talk about your mom life because I'm a mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I have a daughter. She's two and a half. I know you have four beautiful daughters. Yes. What are their ages? So my oldest is 19 and then 14 and then eight and six. So that they're like so... <laughs> all across the board. <laughs> yes, and I love it. I'm sure your hands are so full with like yeah. all these different age groups. You basically have like a toddler up to a teenager who yep. probably just graduated high school. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> literally awesome. toddler to adults. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you even buy clothes? Crazy. Everyone just sh yeah. sharing clothes, sharing makeup, sharing yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My oldest comes over all the time and steals my stuff. I'm just like, what? <laughs> But, yeah, you're yeah. Like, where's my favorite shirt at? Oh, she's wearing it. It's fine. Yeah, she'll walk in and I'm like, oh, there's my shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, cannot even imagine. Like when mine's older, I know she's just going to go in my closet and take all my things, use all my makeup, all my skincare. Yeah. Everything. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, and you were an only child, so I'm sure it's just like so yeah. awesome to have like a house filled with yeah you know, toys and energy and mm -hmm. kids playing and just always doing stuff together. Do you guys like sit together yeah. and eat dinner? Like, do you have like traditions or anything you do throughout the week? You know, no. <laughs> it's probably we don't. Tough to have I mean, any like different we ages. do, yeah. like we eat yeah. dinner, but like to get everyone sitting down at the same time, <laughs> it's usually a Sunday. Yeah. Um, because during the week, like my oldest doesn't even live here. My 14 year old has so much going on. Everyone has their own schedules. They have their own activities and friends, and they're doing all their things. Um, but yeah, we owe it. Like for the summer, Mom. we're. Has it been an hour and thirty minutes? <laughs> no. Ha has it? You need to go sit down. I'm serious because this poor, poor woman has been interrupted so many times trying to do this podcast with me. I need you to go sit. Yeah, but has it been an hour? No, you still have like an hour and fifteen minutes left. <laughs> They're being so naughty right now. <laughs> I'm shook. Anyways. So, what's the ah! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> I'm 
swear. They know just, they know when they can get away with stuff. And they know it's when other people are watching. Yeah. Because they you're know. you're not going to be like full mom terrorist. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm just like, oh, you know exactly what you're doing. And you know I can't yell at you or do anything. Yeah. No. <laughs> I can't do anything. I'm, yes, I can't. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm so sorry. But, yeah. So, in the summer, we're together a lot more. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, during the school year, it's complete madness between, like, gymnastics and this and that and school and whatever. It's crazy. But, yeah, I think our we always get together for the holidays. Like, we spend every single holiday together as a, like, full family. Like, my 19-year-old will come over and we'll make sure we do all of that. But we talk to each other every single day. That's the thing. Is there's not, like, days where we don't talk and we only get together on Sundays. It's, like... It's very much all day, every day. And so, yeah, it's just, I, I hated growing up as an only child. And I felt like it was really lonely. And so I always wanted a lot of kids. And now I'm like, hmm, I should have thought that. <laughs> <laughs> now I know why my mom only had <laughs> It's a little oh, hate for sure. <laughs> I literally saw this thing on TikTok last night. And it was this girl and she was like, you know, the trend right now where you like swipe and you read through, but it's, she was like, yeah. if you ask me what being, you know, 32 without a child was like, I tell you it, you know, was fine and I'm okay. And I thought it was going to be all emotional because then you swipe and it's like, but if you ask me on a deeper level and I was like, oh, she's going to be like, I really want a baby and I'm so sad and you know, da, da. but then it was like, I get to do what I want. I don't have to wake up at any time. I can sit and scroll for hours. I can eat whenever I can go wherever I can. And I was like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> that is but, hysterical. <laughs> no, motherhood really is like the best and hardest thing it it's truly yeah I almost feel like there's no words to describe it because you love them so much but they're so challenging <laughs> yeah there's it's, moments where it really is challenging it As refines you them for alone, sure it's, it's yeah be tough and like I'm sure you raised them as a single mom at times and that's difficult yeah. too. that's a whole nother ball game you know yeah Yep. I'm a yeah. single mom, so I get that because it's definitely tough Like when it's just on you and mm -hmm. you don't have someone else there to help you or to give you a little break or you're trying to like wash your face while they're in the bathtub and you're like changing your clothes. You're yeah. like, you know, you have two seconds to do your hair. Like yeah. it's just what happens. It's so true. It's nonstop. And especially mm -hmm. like with four of them, you know, there's so many, there's always something going on. For sure. You know, with one of them, there's never just like a moment of just like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Do they love that you Which, were on TV? What? Do they love that you were on TV? Like, yeah, really I don't think they really get it. Really? <laughs> My oldest doesn't watch the show. She wants nothing to do with it. Wow. Um, yeah, I think because she saw so much of the BTS, though, like it was her yeah. life with me, and yeah. it was it was pretty brutal. So I think for her, she's like, I don't want to watch that. And then my other ones, they just don't really, like, I don't have it. They've never watched the episodes. They don't, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's just kind of, like, funny when people say stuff. Like, when we go out, they'll be like, why do you want a picture with my mom? You know? They, like, like, don't get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wondered. I'm like, I'm sure they see, like, it's definitely not a normal day-to-day. -day. I'm yeah. sure if you guys are at a store or something and people notice you, they're going to ask yeah. for your photograph or a photo or whatever yeah. They feel. yeah it's it's pretty funny it's pretty funny to just like see like their reaction because they're like ew like it's my mom what's wrong yeah with but like, <laughs> what are you talking about like i see her every day She's yeah exactly <laughs> like i don't get it <laughs> but yeah it's, it's pretty funny they definitely live in i mean they're young enough that they don't write they don't quite understand you know so yeah and i feel like by the time they're older like I don't know. The housewives generation is a little bit older than their age, obviously than their age group. So maybe yeah. they, maybe they won't even get into it. Who knows? I feel like it was more yeah. of like our age group than the younger generation. I agree. But who knows? I mean, it's been around for a while. It could thrive another 30 years. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. I can't. <laughs> 
I'm making a blooper reel of us, and I'm going to be like, I'm moving out. <laughs> I'm done. I'm going to go drink a margarita by myself in the closet. Okay. Literally. <laughs> Every day, I understand Moira Rose like more and more. <laughs> I was I'm not like, ready for that. I'm like, you know what? I get it. Yeah, <laughs> I love Moira. She was the oh, she's the, the biggest shit best. show, but the best woman alive on the. She on is the for freaking real. best. I love her so much. I love her so much. <laughs> that was, so I actually did cool. Have you heard of cool sculpting? Do you know what that is? Yes, but I yes. Don't, I've heard of it, but I don't really understand it. I don't okay, know so like essentially, that essentially it like freezes the fat off your oh. body. And oh, so okay. as I get older, like I hate my like bat wings where like your arms like, oh, like, yeah, where you yeah. like, extra, like flap. Mm-hmm. So I went in and did cool sculpting like a month or two ago on the back yeah. of my arm. Cause I'm like, I want my arm, like the, I saw this picture of the back of me and I was like, no, like my arms just did not look good. Yeah. So I went and got cool sculpting on. First of all, it was like, the weirdest experience. Like it felt like I was getting my arm burned off at first and then your arm goes numb and then you can't feel it anymore. But like the first five minutes are like very stressful because it feels like it literally feels like fire on your skin kind of. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we're going out with this, is the lady had like the suctions on my arms and was like starting the th- procedure and she knew like, cause she does this all the time. Like the beginning is kind of like yeah. tough. And then once your like arms go numb, you don't really feel it anymore. So I'm sitting there and I'm like kind of starting to panic. I'm like, um, this feels like very uncomfortable. <laughs> like, yeah. what is going on? So she's like, mm, hold on. And so there's this big TV, like in the treatment room I was in. And she's like, let me just pull up Shit's Creek. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> you are my girl. So I'm like, the watching. best show ever. It's literally so my favorite Shit's show. Creek. It's literally my favorite show. It is the best. Like I could watch any, any episode from any season at any point, just like how mm-hmm. you could probably watch friends growing up, like just in the background, right. like. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. watch Shit's Creek all the time. And I was like, she knows me. She didn't even have to ask. And she put this on yep. and it like instantly calmed me down. And then by yeah. the time, like I was already laughing at Moira, probably I yeah. couldn't even feel my arms. <laughs> yeah. I literally, that's so funny you say that. Cause I just did like a little mini road trip to Vegas and mm. I watched, I started watching Shit's Creek on the road trip from like yeah. season one, episode one. And I'm just like, this is so good. Like, it's just so good. I oh. I was so sad when it ended, but then I was, like, kind of grateful because I'm, like, I think of, like, um, Grey's Anatomy and how it oh. just, like, yeah. it's, like, I can't even watch it now because it's just, like, such a mess. And they should have just, like, ended it when it was, like, yeah. really good and, like, at its peak and then they didn't. Yeah. And so I'm, like, you know what? I'm grateful they ended Shit's Creek when it, like, hit its peak because I probably would have eventually got disappointed. And now I just forever yeah. love it. I know. I, I've always thought that too because I was like, no, that can't be the end. I want to see like more, like what happens with their lives, you know? And then I was like, yeah, that was smart. Okay. So let's see. I think I'm going to ask a couple more questions about the show because we touched on it for sure, but I want to know a little bit about behind the scenes because yeah. um, I know the shows like aren't scripted, but like yeah, you guys would meet up after like not seeing each other for like periods of time, you know? So would like the directors kind of like guide you on like how to like steer conversations or anything, or would you just kind of have like so much to catch up on? You didn't care. You just kind of like dive in and yeah. Start so talking. there's not like a director. There's like producers or producers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Look at me. I'm like I don't even know what words I'm saying. Here. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. There's no like directors or anything like that. There's just like producers and an executive producer and stuff like that. But. Um, I think you kind of know what you're going into before, like, okay, for instance, like, let's say there's like an event, right? So Mm -hmm. they're like, okay, you know, this is Lisa's appraised ski or whatever. And, you know, this is your first time seeing the women since this. So, you know, just, they don't let you talk like beforehand because they want it to be, they want it to be organic, Mm -hmm. which obviously I a hundred percent Get. And you're not really supposed to talk to each other like while filming's happening, like call each other outside of filming and stuff like that. Okay. I'm sure they do. <laughs> I didn't, right? But I was the only new girl. So it kind of, you know, whatever. So they don't really say, this is what you're going to say. And da 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 da. But it just kind of, I mean, and, and again, I'm only speaking for myself. And I only had one season. And my season was 100%. Okay, what I experienced was real. 
Yeah. So I'm not on like my 12th season on Beverly Hills where we're, you know, I don't even know, but like for, so for me, it was all very, very real and organic. And it just, there, those were the real issues happening. Like yeah. the stuff with my mom was really something happening. Um, my issues with Lisa were a hundred percent real. My issues with Angie were a hundred percent real. And I'm definitely the kind of person where you don't need to tell me what to say. <laughs> so I don't know if maybe for other housewives, it's a little bit different or they're like, you know, make sure you bring this up. Like, don't forget, you know, like I can walk into a party, see Lisa and know exactly what I want to say. Yeah. And I'm fine. You don't have to tell me, you know, anything. So for me, it wasn't, it wasn't, I guess the word would be staged. Mm -hmm. The only thing in my opinion that was staged to me was Heather. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's, that's the only thing that I, I mean, and some other things as well. Some of the other women, but, um, you know, acting so shocked that I was behind this page or involved in this page is just bullshit. Um, that's the only thing that to me was just like, for real, like this is, this is what we're, we're going to act like we're in uproar, even though you fucking lived up that page's ass. That's, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. yeah, it's just that situation for me was a hundred percent just bullshit so i feel like when you're on a show like that your bullshit meter alone is high so you know yeah. instantly when someone's just being themselves having a conversation like you were doing or when they're like trying to just i don't know put on like a scene kind of or make like a big deal out of something or kind of just like exaggerate things yeah yeah i mean to act like you had no idea is just really fucking comical and just <laughs> mom someone's getting another ice cream oh my god Girl. Jimmo's getting another ice cream. All right, so let's talk a little bit about your haters, since I feel like this is something you and I can relate to a lot. <laughs> so oh. how do you deal with haters and stuff that you've gotten probably from the show or just like after dealing with being on there and then now being kind of like a public figure? I'm sure you get crap yeah. all the time or even from like your mom, you know? Yeah, honestly, I... <sighs> It depends on the day, <laughs> truly. Girl, there's, I feel that. Yeah. There's some days where I just, like, laugh it off, and I'm like, whatever. There's other days where I'm, like, block everybody, you know, that leaves any kind of nasty comment. Um, and there's other days where I'm like, you know what? Not today. And, yep. I, you know, I'll be combative back, which I always hate when I do that because, it's in essence, it's really just giving them exactly what they're looking for. That's right. Yeah. So I really try. I've learned over time. I was in the very beginning of being kind of like catapulted into the world of scrutiny by online haters. <laughs> I definitely was more engaging. Now I just like delete and block because I just kind of feel like they're going to continue to do those kind of comments. So it's better to just, you know whatever. But I think the hardest part is when it comes from inside the house, right? So that's what's been eye-opening for me is like my mother, for instance, or my ex-best friends, stuff like that. That is just, I would have never guessed or ever banked on um, someone that was literally like family, truly family. Um, giving these fucking women my own private voice messages that we would share between each other. So I think that was more sickening than anything. Mm -hmm. um, it says a lot about a person. I never retaliated and I mean, I did, but I didn't like release her voice notes. I didn't release the things she said about those women. I didn't, do that because to me that says more about her as a person. I mean, it's just like, honestly, it was fucking sick because at the end of the day, you're my best friend. You were the only person that I had in my life at that time. And I was telling her everything. So if I call her on a random fucking Tuesday to vent, I'm, I'm, I'm 
believing I'm doing that in a safe space. Right. So to turn it around and literally give it to the women that you, in essence, also completely hated to destroy me and ruin me and get me fired from a show. It's just, I'll see you in hell. That's literally how I feel. I'll fucking see you in hell. And the fact that these women try to justify it in their head like you're better than me mm-hmm. is hilarious. You're low down dirty just as. So you think this is partially why you didn't come back? Because of your best friend doing this to you? A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. She, um, I mean, yeah, she's probably 90%. The other 10% was the complete lies and bullshit that came out of certain women's mouths. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, when you kind of, when you give them all the ammunition and all they have to do is pull the fucking trigger, you know what I mean? It's just. It's so low. I mean, it's such a, yeah, that was such a, like you said, it was, you were in a safe space with someone that was literally family to you because you yeah. don't have a lot of family. Yeah. You're going through something really traumatic and hard. You, I mean, I'm the same way. I just trust the people in my life because yeah. I'm loyal to them. So exactly. I expect loyalty back. And then when exactly. they go and you over like that, it's like, yeah, it's like this biggest dagger in your heart because it's like, okay, I can kind of get over these losers making Reddit pages about me and like talking shit. But when it comes from someone so close to you that knows who you are and knows your soul and knows what you've gone through and has firsthand like seen the real shit you've been through and then uses it against you to like screw you over more. I mean, that is painful. And again, something that like shows their true colors because you're taking someone who's in a vulnerable place and just pelting them into the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's such an easy way to hurt somebody and you took it. And that's just like really gross to me. Yeah. I definitely believe in karma. I really, really do. I think a hundred percent I got mine. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know that they will get theirs and yeah, I, I will literally rejoice in the day because I I think it's absolutely disgusting. Um, Mm -hmm. I think it's also beyond hypocritical to sit there and complain about a burner account. Um, when in essence, what you're doing is literally 10 times worse. It's just, it's just baffling. I mean, we're all hypocrites, right? At the end of the day, we can all be very hypocritical when stuff is done to us. And I get that and I accept it. I'm not in complete denial over here, you know, but I never released my best friend's private messages and voice notes that she trusted me with. Um, yeah, that's, but that's, that's like, a lot about your character, you know, because the thing I always remind myself is you're never going to make yourself look better by putting someone else down. Right. It actually just makes you look like shit. Like if you're right. putting someone down or putting a business down or putting anybody down, it shows your heart and your character and who yeah. you are. And then I can't trust you because you, right. you're going to go do that to me then, you know? Exactly. So when people think it somehow makes them look better by like, putting someone else down, it might for like two seconds, make them Mm -hmm. feel good because they can come together with a small group of other people that do that also. But the majority of people are going to see that and go, that's not a good look. You know, I think, and I think that happened. Like a lot of people were like, okay, but you were her best friend. You were her best friend. So you're sitting there releasing this stuff, but you're not releasing your side. There has to be a reason why she felt so comfortable talking to you about this, saying these things to you, like release your side, you know? So I am grateful that people were at least able to acknowledge and and see that, you know? Yeah. Do you think like, I always wonder this, do you think that when you're just a public figure and you're on social media or on, you know, TV or whatever it is, do you think it's just like, a given that you're going to have hate. Oh yeah. Like yeah. I feel like everyone, everyone has hate mm-hmm. if they're throwing themselves out there in some sort of way. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. I think that's the only guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I think that you're is the guaranteed only guarantee. To be hated if you're yes. somebody. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. I can't guarantee money. I can't guarantee success. I can't guarantee you'll be liked, but I can guarantee you will be hated. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. 100%. Yeah. 
<laughs> There's something yeah. kind of freeing about that though, because if you just kind of lay it out there on the table, it's like, it doesn't make it so scary anymore. It's like, okay, this yeah. is just part of it. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And people will hate over the stupidest things. And you know, it's just, it's almost, it's bizarre. It's actually really bizarre because these people don't know you at, at all. all. They and they like don't, they, do. they didn't even live the situation whatsoever. You know, they're watching literally two minutes of a hundred hours. You know what I mean? And, exactly. You know, they just form this opinion that's so, so intense. <laughs> And they are just, you know, whatever. But I think it goes both ways. I think, like, the fans have been also absolutely amazing and so supportive and so incredible. And really, I could not have gotten through it without them. I mean oh. that 100%. Um, mm. Yeah, they carried me through. I, I'm very, 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 very fortunate to have um, such incredible fans. So, yeah. So what are you doing now? Now that the show's over and you're moving forward, what are you doing? Yeah, there's definitely things in the works. I can't wait to be able to talk about it. I can't right now, but there's okay. definitely things that. happening and I'm I'm so excited. I can't wait. I think everything as painful as life is, I do believe that everything happens for a reason. And I think we're meant to propel forward. Mm -hmm. Um and whether it's through pain or happiness or success or failure, we're always supposed to be moving forward. And I just look at my opportunity, you know, on Housewives with Bravo as a stepping stone. And it was a very sharp, painful stepping stone to take at times. But I think, you know, ultimately it'll get me to where I'm meant to go. And I think that's just the only way we can kind of look at things. Um, to keep going for sure. Yeah. I love that. I think you have such a healthy mindset towards everything oh, and you, you you left all of that in your past, but like you see the gratitude and the opportunity that came from it and you're going to take it. Yeah. But you're also not going to like let all of that kind of stuff define you. And I think it's awesome because right. I can't wait to see you evolve and grow. And it sounds like you have a lot of great things coming. So thank you. I'll have to definitely keep up on social media and see what you're up yes. to. Yes. Sounds yes, like you yes, have some yes, really great things. Sure. I want to like <laughs> hear about Everly's sass in the future. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> My crazy daughter. I know. Yeah. I feel like I can't even compare to you with four beautiful <laughs> girls running around. <laughs> it's so crazy, girl. I'm like, don't leave me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much thank for chatting you. with me today. It was so nice to get to know you more and to help you my too. listeners like understand you behind the cameras in the show and just like who you truly are. I think you're a beautiful soul and I'm so, so glad thank we got to you. connect today. Thank you. Me too. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful. Thank you. You're so <laughs> welcome. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, be loud, be proud, and be shameless. For more information, visit us at anskinbeauty.com to shop all our medical-grade skincare. 